Hey there, everybody. Before we get into the episode this week, I just wanted to remind you that we're working with IRL Guardian to make a quarantined Guardians video. He sent through some examples. Basically, what we need you to do is react like you're getting hit and then execute a move from the world of destiny. We think the video will be a lot of fun. Uh, I'll put the tweet in the description below if you want to join in. Uh, I said in my video, I know there's going to be a lot of people in the video, but if you want to partake, be sure to send yours in. Welcome to Fireteam Chat, IGN's Destiny Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Joining me on the show today is Brian Malkowitz. C-Team. Travis Northup. The triumphant titan, McClunky. McClunky. You're off the show. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I liked your other intro better. What was it? I don't remember. Something like that. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna take your bang. I'm gonna go bang. Just that's your no. new. That's your new intro. Shabam. Shabam. Not my bam. Uh, on today's show, we have a lot of really, really cool news. Uh, Bungie talked about how they're going to be bringing Destiny to the PS5 and Series X. We're going to talk about how they're adding transmog to the game, how they're changing the Eververse, how there's going to be vanity rewards again for most activities and how they're changing trials there was just a ton a ton of news this week kicking it off at the top of the show though one of the things that really really piqued my interest was all about how they said that uh destiny 2 is coming to the ps5 and xbox series x and that we can expect news soon so i have to ask the panel what do you guys think this means for destiny 3 are we still going to get it what's happening there? Do you think we're just going to be in Destiny 2 land for the rest of time? Brian? Uh, starting out with their announcement of the of Destiny 2 being on next gen, uh, in the Inside Xbox, you know, they, they were listed as a partner for next gen. Um, and so I think the reason why Bungie tweeted about Destiny 2 being on next gen so quickly is to temper expectation of the community about whether or not, you know, Destiny 3 is on the horizon. Um, because, you know, the community, if Bungie does anything cryptic or vague, they're like, what's going on? What are you doing? <laughs> and so, you know, it's just them saying, hey, like, we're a partner of Next Gen, but it's Destiny 2. Chill. And so I, th I think that's I think that's what it is, is that it's like it's not an illusion uh, or an, uh, them alluding to a Destiny 3 anytime soon. That's, I don't think that's what the case is. They're, they're basically tempering expectations. They are saying yep. no Destiny 3 anytime soon. I still think no destiny three ever i think mm. this is the world the sandbox that we're going to be playing in and they because like their options are what they nuke it all and start over again from scratch and that's really really enticing but what if they just fix this sandbox that they have uh travis do you think we're going to get a destiny three do you think uh destiny two is a sandbox we're going to be in for the rest of the destiny life cycle well, I definitely agree with Brian's assessment that the announcement means that Destiny 3 is not coming anytime soon. I think we can 100% rule out it being the next you know, expansion in, in September and following a similar cadence of Destiny 1. I think that's 100% not going to happen at this point. Um, but, but I'm actually one of the believers who thinks that Destiny 3 could happen for a few reasons. One... The sandbox, like we've talked about this a ton on the show, but the sandbox, the, the, the engine that they're using to run Destiny 2, even people on uh, Bungie's development team have, have said that, that there are some challenges there. And, you know, creating a new engine would give them a chance to uh, relaunch the game and, and deal with that problem. The second reason I think that it's possible we get a Destiny 3 is uh, the fact that Destiny 2 kind of has a bad rep right now. Uh, lots of players have kind of said, nah, I don't like Destiny 2 as much as I like Destiny 1, and I don't think Bungie's going to get a lot of those people back. Destiny 3 would be an opportunity for them to relaunch, rebrand, and say, hey, we're back, and we took all those things that you said and didn't like to mind, and, and now you've got a new option to do that. I, I think that, that you could also be right that they, you know, nuke destiny 2 and kind of do a relaunch in the same game that is that is kind of another way to do that but um i wouldn't rule it out you know here's the thing i i hear a lot that like destiny 2 is is not for everybody they've lost a lot of players and we we keep hearing that narrative within the community uh i i will say to to that point that i do think there are ways that the game could be improved trials could be better they definitely need to deal with the hacker situation but to claim that destiny 2 is in a bad place it's simply false it's not 
It's in the top 10 on Steam every week. That's the only numbers that we have publicly accessible. And it's free to play across all the boards, so they're getting revenue from there. And I actually think Destiny probably has uh, more players than most games. And I, I say this all the time. Other games would kill to be in the place that Destiny is in. Destiny has a lot of lessons to learn and a lot of ways to refine this current engine that they're in. But I don't know that building the game from ground up, from the ground up in a new engine is going to magically solve all those problems. I think it would introduce new ones. They just tried it with Destiny 2. They went from the Destiny 1 engine to the Destiny 2 engine. And I think we're in the sandbox. Like, how many years has Destiny 2 been out? Well, we're, we're going into we're year four, into, so it's almost fourth, yeah. it's almost three years, so we're going into the fourth year. Now, yeah. there is one game that did something really, really interesting where they updated the engine but didn't change the game, and that is Fortnite. Fortnite largely remained the same, but they were able to update the engine on the back end when they did the Black Hole event. That was really, really smartly done, and I could imagine Destiny doing something the same. <clears throat> I don't think we ever get a Destiny 3, but I could see a world where they drop the two from Destiny and they just make it Destiny and that's the game that we play, you know, ad nauseum for the the rest of the time, the way that Warframe has kind of remained consistent. Or or World of Warcraft. Shout out to Sean yeah. Finnegan. Yeah, or World of <laughs> Warcraft. I haven't followed World World of Warcraft as closely, but I'm sure in the back end they've had to update and such though. Oh so, yeah, for sure. So talking about the jump from current gen to PS5 Series X what are some of your main asks? Brian, I think there's one that we can all agree <laughs> would uh, benefit the game a lot. Frames. Thanks, Brian. And all that's right. It. That's the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, uh, frame, rate, frame rate is a big is a big deal for me, especially as a, as a primarily PC player. Um, I play on PC a lot for the game, and that, but sometimes when I'm playing the game and I want to mindlessly grind, I want to sometimes just go chill and sit on my couch and just play that game. But it's very hard when I'm going from 160 plus frames to 30 or sometimes less, depending on where you're at in the game, if it's not performing very well. Um, so I, I would that's that's probably my biggest ask for the game is to have a performance boost. That way I can you know make that change when I just want to chill on my couch and play the game. For sure. And uh, Travis, what are some of the items that you would like to see improved in the Destiny engine? You're mainly a console, or you were mainly a console player. I don't know if you're still mainly Xbox, but why don't you tell us a little bit about sort of your experience uh, still on that platform? Yeah, so I, I am still mainly an Xbox player. I now, as of a couple weeks ago, have a really powerful gaming PC. And so, uh, you know, want to play a PC more. But the, the truth of the matter is the reason I've stayed on console for so long is because that's where my friends are. It's a much more casual experience in terms of sitting on a couch with a controller. Uh, PCs are kind of hard to set up in a, in a living room situation, in my experience. Um, but yeah, the, the, the thing for me really isn't performance. I mean, obviously, the game on PC performs way better in terms of graphical fidelity and frame rate performance. I go between Xbox and PC pretty regularly, so it's not that big of a jump to me. But the one thing that really does stick out like a sore thumb when going back to console is the wait time between loading screens. You know, it takes five minutes to get to the tower. It takes, uh, you know, 10, 15 seconds to open your menu if you're in a certain activity. Um, and even when you're in orbit, the, the responsiveness of opening menus isn't always all that great. Um, and I think in that regard, you know, console could benefit greatly from, you know, having better load times and that sort of thing. And a question for me is, you know, if if console gets uh, 60 frames, if it gets, um, you know, faster load times, all that stuff, are they going to be cross play with the current generation, Xbox One X and the uh, PS4? And if so, you know, how are PS4 players going to be able to play alongside PS5 players and all that stuff? So that, that's an interesting dynamic to me. I didn't even think of that. That's a really good point. Uh, Xbox has is that it? whole philosophy of being able to play anywhere. But you remember, I don't remember, could 360 players in Destiny 1 play with uh, no. Xbox One players? No, uh, they could not. They could that not. Was not a thing. But, but <laughs> that, Destiny 2 is already could... pretty... It's already pretty fragmented, and I could see you know adding two more platforms on top of what you're already doing. Even if you have cross save between all of them, that's a, a lot of different places where your player base yeah, is kind so... of... Same. I don't I, I don't I don't think that like they're going because like the next generation as, at least for Xbox is that the it's going to be built on the same architecture. Mm -hmm. So effectively when you when you buy a game on Xbox 1 you're you're 
pretty much playing the same game as people are playing on Series X. If Series X is just playing a better version of that game in terms of like unlocked graphics or things like that. So it's like it's like with with Microsoft Smart Delivery System. If you're if you buy it on Xbox One, you're going to have it on on Series X, uh, and you're going to be playing. You're just going to be playing the same game, but just better graphics. So I think that crossplay is going to exist naturally rather than like a, a thing they have to add to, as a feature. Yeah, I think it I mean it could be a huge win across the board. So let's move on. Let's talk real quick about what they are improving in Destiny. So one of the asks from uh Sean Finnegan, no longer on the show, joined us for the charity stream, was transmog for many years. And Bungie actually wrote out the year the words transmogrification. Trans. They in, said it in the TWAB. Uh, meaning we're going to be able to change our looks. And I think that's excellent. That's awesome, right? Uh, yeah. What, what's your reaction to this, Brian? Uh, finally, Sean Finnegan gets what he's been asking for for <laughs> decades of Destiny. No, no, it, it's kind of good, right? Like they, 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 you know, got their feet wet with it with, you know, adding ornaments. So it's going to be nice to to be able to finally, like, put that on a broader scale and be where it actually needs to be where I can, yeah, I can ornament any sort of armor that I want to look exactly how I want, rather than just having like, you know, a predetermined set of armors that can be turned, you know, to, to look the way that Bungie kind of wants to have. So it'll be nice that if like, if I get like a raid armor that looks incredible, but I have an armor piece from somewhere else that I think looks way better, um, then I can just, you know, transmog that into it. Uh, without having to worry about whether or not it's it's an Eververse ornament piece or not, so that'll that'll be nice. Do you have an armor set that you're eyeing up already? Um, not particularly. That not that I can think of. Um, not that Trials I can think of the name set. of it. Trial try armor is good, but there's like yeah. there's some there's some armor that came out with uh with uh with War Mine. That's kind of a rare piece of armor that I'd like to be able to to transmog into anything because I keep getting shit rolls for it. Excuse yeah. my language. <laughs> they specifically <laughs> said uh, silver or in-game effort. Um, Travis, what do you think? How do you think the system is going to work? Just guess. Yeah, I, I, I think my guess is that we're going to have to spend some kind of resources to transmog items, or you know, you'll get like a, a silver token, you know, that you can take to break down a piece of armor and turn it into a universal ornament that can be applied to other things. Um, one thing I'm wondering is if this applies to weapons. I, I would guess I would I would guess no, but I, I'm not sure if they clarified in the. Uh, they they, they the didn't mention call. weapons specifically, so they they are just speaking in terms of armor at least right now. Yeah, I mean, cool. with, like transmog for weapons, that means you would have a weapon that looked like something else, and you need to be able to telegraph that in mm -hmm. PvP. I think I don't think weapon looks change. And that's fine with me. It's more about the yeah. armor sets. They do all these fashion contests, and it's like, here's a bunch of garbage armor I would never wear because it has shitty stat rolls. I would love to just look that way persistently. Mm -hmm. And th that's that's what this is going to offer, and that's why I'm really happy about it. You seem to think they're just going to make it really easy for us, Travis. They're just going to be like... <laughs> they're, they're, they're not. It's like, I imagine that it's going to... Either it's going to be another another way for those for us to spend enhancement cores or upgrade modules. Um, I, I, I have a feeling they're not going to introduce new resources for this, like a new currency. I think they're just going to use existing currencies for it. Um, or, like I said, you can do silver, so they're probably going to add a fast track where you can spend a couple of dollars to transmog. But I imagine it's not going to be a system where you break down a piece of armor and that becomes a universal ornament. I think that you're going to break down a piece of armor, kind of like in Fusion, where you kind of infuse it into a certain piece of armor, and then that armor looks like that. And if you want to make another piece of armor look like that same one, you're going to have to find another drop to break that one down. So you're not. Hmm. I don't think it's going to unlock it. I think it's just hmm. going to be... Um, you know, something you'll have to keep doing if you want all of your armor to look like one piece. You're going to have to keep on getting drops of that specific armor. I will mm -hmm. say this. I think they have to leave exotics alone. That's the exotic armor because they need to be able to telegraph, hey, this is the exotic I'm wearing. I know what ability that hunter has if he's wearing worm husk, for example, or that titan has if he's wearing the booties. <laughs> as long as they keep knows. on doing... As long as they keep on introducing exotic ornaments into the game, that's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, you know, I just know in the past that Bungie has released exotic ornaments that just look like shaders, mm -hmm. rather than because I, I think that I think that ornaments themselves need to effectively change like the way the 
weapon looks. Because if, if you know if you're just changing colors and spots on ornaments, then that's just a shader, you know. So it's just like as long as they're 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 continuing with ornaments, then that's that's fine. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> in addition, there's not going to be any more seasonal armor in the Eververse. Uh, Travis, why don't you tell people a little bit more about what's going on there and what they're changing? Yeah, what they're really saying is that they're not going to put things in Eververse that seem like they should be a reward for the season, right? So if there's armor that's like themed after, you know, SIVA and it's a SIVA themed uh, season, or if there's ghosts or, uh, or uh, speed or sparrows or uh, ships that are themed after the season, they're not going to put that in Eververse. This has been a complaint for a really long time from the community. I think this is probably long overdue in terms of them addressing it, but you know, the, it, it is a good step. I think this it's is something not, for players to be excited for. Yeah, it's just, it's not even like that. It's quote unquote a good step. It's a thing that we had in the game not that long ago, right? We had all you know sparrows, ships, uh, a ghost, and things have been in raids and in activities, right? When the when Last Wish raid came out, it had ghosts, it had sparrows, it had ships, and same with you know the Shattered Throne that had the ship, um, and you know so it's just like it's and it was just kind of kind of underwhelming to see something like shadow keep come out and all the things that looked like the scarlet keep were eververse and you're just kind of like that kind of sucks yeah that's weird so you know you know that that system that they're implementing that seems like a great change was something that we had not that long ago yeah i'll never forget when destiny 2 came out uh or actually before it came out destin and i went to a preview event and he played the game and and slowly realized as he got to the end of the campaign that he was never going to get his sparrow through natural progression. He had to get it through an Eververse drop. And Mm. that entire, we were there for like a week playing the game together. He never got a Sparrow to drop. And he was furious because there's no other way to unlock a Sparrow in the game. I was was complaining the whole time with the devs behind me. It's like, oh yeah, cool. I'll just run there, I guess. I'm not going to get that (laughs) Sparrow. I guess I'm I'm walking over there. Yeah, Yeah, because it was was a random drop, right? And that was the only way that you could get them. or From Eververse, yeah. I think to get it early, that was the only way to get it. But I think there yeah, was a point. Early. There was a point in the story where you did get it, like you just get a sparrow. That was, I think I'm pretty sure that was a reward from Amanda after beating the campaign. Yeah, yeah I remember I'm playing. Pretty sure I remember you playing never the entire. It. Yeah, I remember playing the entire D2 campaign without a sparrow. Yeah. And then, then, then you, you know, once you got it and you wanted to do it on alt, you could just set your sparrow to your other characters. But yeah, that. Uh, that was pre pre collections where you could do that. So, so that's definitely something that we don't want to see return. Uh, I'm glad they're moving away from shoving everything into the Eververse. It's, I get that they need to make money, but how how many people on this panel bought the the armor from the Guardian Games event? Travis, did you did you drop some cash on it? Nope. I see it in all the trailers. I actually really like it. I'm like, I can't earn it. Not gonna buy it. And I thought, and, I thought that yeah, I thought it was a great retro-looking design, and the fact that I was hidden behind Eververse, I said no, never mind. Well, I also don't have space for it. They haven't addressed that challenge yet. I think this Universal Transmog might do a little bit to alleviate that, because if I can just delete the armor that I don't really like but still maintain that look, it's a way of feeling like that I still have it within my collections. You know, um, yeah, I don't know. I think they. St- because they're talking about adding all these new things in the next season. Um, mm. Do you think they went too far with Eververse, or do you think this is them just sort of refining where they were? Travis, I think that. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that. I think that Eververse. They that you know not so much that they got it in their heads. I think that Bungie, you know, they want they wanted to test right. They wanted to test because, like I was saying earlier, we had the we had these systems in in last wish where uh, where these these aspirational activities had you know you know accessories like sparrows ghosts ships emotes uh things like that in the raid as raid drops um so i think i think bungie was testing what they could do or quote unquote without sounding scummy get away with having these sorts of things in eververse as a you know another source of income and you know it, it didn't work out so now they're now they've recognized that what they're doing is the right thing to do for the game so good on them for doing it it's just unfortunate it took this long to get to that point travis yeah i'm kind of the same way i think that uh this is definitely not something we should be you know patting bungie on the back for doing this is sort of <laughs> You know, this is them kind of reacting to our feedback that we've been giving for way longer than 
I mean, it's been what over a year at least that this problem has been happening. And every time a new season launches, you see people on Reddit posting, uh, how is this item part of Eververse and not something you can earn in the campaign? Like what the heck? And so this is, you know, a return to something that they probably should never have changed. And uh, obviously I'm glad to see it. I think a lot of the community will be, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think we should really be heaping praise on this, on this one. Right. Yeah, I get that. I'm glad they're making the change. Uh, mm -hmm. Nonetheless, there are a lot more changes that we need to go over in this one of show. Though, one of the changes I'm actually most excited about are the uh, raid strikes and dungeons that are getting rewards of vanity again. I mm -hmm. think that is something that has been sorely lacking from the game, and I'm incredibly happy to see it return. Uh, we used to have it. I remember doing some of the old strikes to get the the chair remote where you have the wine glass. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. The, the the toast, the callus toast. Yeah, the callus toast, yeah. and and that one is honestly, I think it's still on my my emo wheel. It's it's one of my favorites, and it was. Oh really yeah, I have a, I have it mapped for all three characters so that because that that's still my favorite emo in the game. Um, so I'm excited to see that sort of stuff return into you know into the raids or dungeons things like that that are reminiscent of things we see in those raids that are relevant to that content. So, yeah. Um, Travis, any thoughts on it? <laughs> no, I'm excited for that. I hope I don't have to do uh, the raid 30 plus times like I did for the, Oh, Calif you will. Email. But yeah, uh, will. yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it, Hey, it'll get me to play more destiny because I have to have all the emotes. That's like one of the things that I absolutely want to collect. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I, I think it's a good way to get people to play. Uh, do I like grinding the same event over and over again? No. So hopefully there's a, uh, you know, not another anarchy situation with these cosmetics because that would really irritate me. But uh, it's a good step. There should be more stuff you can unlock by playing the game. Yeah, I I really enjoyed getting these sort of items passively. I'm really really glad that they're looking at strikes and dungeons for these items. It's just it's been too long. There's too much in the Eververse right now. I'm really, really glad that they're moving it all out into the sandbox because it means at the end of the day, we all get something more. I do hope that they refine it because when DFA and the sniper and all the coveted items were in the strike, some people would run those like hundreds of times before they actually got that drop. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's part of the excitement though. Right? Yeah, like true. if you just got it. But then there was like, I remember Anarchy, which you can only get from the raid, from the final chest. And I did it so many times. And I was just tweeting about it to the point where they increased the chances. Well, not because of me, just because it was so rampant. It was mostly because of you. But Have I'll you finally gotten that? I'll take Have that. you gotten it? I got it, yeah. And I never ran oh, that okay, raid okay. again. Yeah. And yeah, I got all the... I still need to do it because I haven't gotten Fallen Armaments yet. And I've done that raid a billion times. But, oh, is that um, where they've got? So I that's think where, I, yeah. I think I got all the armaments way before I got the exotic, <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, the next raid in Destiny 2 will have new exotic accessories to chase, so that is good. Uh, somebody wrote, think ghosts, sparrows, emotes, etc." cetera. So yeah. that's awesome. Awesome. Do you guys think we're getting the next raid pretty soon? Yeah, uh, I think it'll be uh, yeah. September. Yeah. So yeah, we have- expansion. How many more seasonal expansions do we have in the season pass? We have one, one, one We have one left. One left before and the next expansion, yeah. Does that take us through to the fall expansion? Yep. Yep. It does, yeah. That'll take June, July, August, because seasons usually last about three months. Um, so presumably there'll be like maybe like a week or two of quote-unquote downtime before the next expansion hits. So, I mean, we don't know the date of the next expansion. Um, and Bungie, hasn't, uh, Bungie couldn't make the next season a little bit longer, but... Um, yeah, presumably that'll lead right into it. Uh, some other positive changes. Eververse is not going to sell ships, sparrows, ghosts, or ornaments that are based on the activity of the new season. Thank you. That starts <laughs> season 12. We're on season... What season are we on? We're on We're on 10 right now. So next season is 11. All right. So we got one more so season. Next of... se yeah, next season. Like, uh, nothing's changing, basically, next season. Mm -hmm. um, but the Blank. seasonal armor, the seasonal armor changes next season, though. Uh, we'll, we'll, that'll be in the pool. This one had an interesting point. Uh, claims it's dev time they can spend on itemizing the future. Can you elaborate on that? Oh, that is uh, that. So what they mean by that is that um, so For, when they're starting in season twelve, they're you know thing you know seasonal or sorry yeah seasonal items that are relevant to activities aren't going to be sold in in the Eververse. 
And they said right now they're not planning on changing past stuff. So anything season 11 and before, those things are probably li are likely to stay in the Eververse indefinitely because they're saying that they can focus development time on getting future stuff out, you know, making sure that's not in um, Eververse and making sure that it's part of uh, loot drops in specific ac activities. So yeah. I'm not sure what it takes to code things in Eververse to be drops in the world or specific activities. So I don't, that's, they're, they're basically just saying that it, it takes extra dev time and that dev time could be focused on, on new things. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well, all that's going on. We're also getting new armor from strikes, Gambit and crucible. Great. Give me yearly. a place to put it all yearly. Yeah. They're saying that every year they're creating a new, a new armor set for Gambit strikes crucible, which is, which is they use a, Interesting terminology. I'm trying to find it here. Uh, it, it sounds like the armor across those three activities are going to basically be the same, mm -hmm. um, but they're going to they're going to have different like decals or shaders um, that kind of are specific to that activity. So it's like if I get that armor dropped into Crucible, it'll look the same as the one for Gambit and Strikes, but slightly different to make so that it, it's visually noticeable that I got that from from. The crucible so it'll have like a crucible skin but all the armor will sort of look the same it'll sort it'll look the same and yeah like i imagine that the armor sets are going to be called the same thing but they're going to have something that looks a little slightly different so that way you know which activity you, that maybe they'll bring back from. the uh the glowy lights that we had at the uh, final year of destiny one oh yeah uh, the uh, you, you have those green called? for gambit red for crucible blue for strikes that sort of thing I forgot what those were called. What were those called? I don't remember. Who remembers? I don't remember what those were called. Maybe they were moats of moats of customization. You know? Moats of customization. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was it at all. Uh, I brought up earlier in the show that I was playing Destiny One again, and man, do I ever miss shaders that just apply to your whole character as opposed to like oh, one God. piece? Yes, yes, and no sure. at that because like you couldn't customize which piece got a shader. Yeah, because sometimes saying, uh, you know, I'm not saying it needs to be an either or situation. It should yeah. be an option. It should oh, have absolutely been. as a being able to, like, able to like one shader and being able to choose everything was great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so I, easy because you can preview what your armor looks like as with the whole shader applied to it. So why isn't there just a button like hold a, when you're in that preview screen to actually apply it to everything? Again, I imagine it's an engine issue. Like there's <laughs> no, there's no reason why Bungie hasn't added that if it's, it's a, not a technical limitation, right? It's like a, it's a time issue. It's not an engine issue. I don't think. Maybe. Yeah. I'm that sure that would be my guess too. Yeah. Cause like, yeah. what are you going to do? Are you going to focus on the 9 million hackers destroying your PVP landscape right now on PC? <laughs> or are you going to apply shit at all? Or are you going yeah, yeah. to, are you going to spend that time on apply it all to the, yeah, shader? Yep. Everything. They got bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Um, in addition to all this, a new pursuit weapon will come with the seasons. Just that's one. good. That's, that's, that, well, hold that's up, hold up, hold up. Too. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go there, each year new set, sets, years four, five, and six, were given as examples. Yes. So three more that's years. That's what I was talking of, about earlier. That's yeah. what I was talking about earlier is Luke Smith, he, he used those four, five, and six as examples. Uh, year four, five, and six. So it's like, does he is he giving those as just examples or is he letting us know, hey, there's at least three more years of Destiny 2. Oh, I think there's three more years of Destiny 2, personally. <laughs> like, I've said it how many times. I We're either not get. I mean, how long can Destiny go on? Do you think this is going to be a World of Warcraft game that just never ends? I think it can be. I mean, going? like, I don't think it can be with Destiny 2. Like, World unless, unless you got, going? Unless, no, but I mean, unless, unless, sorry, excuse me, unless you guys, unless they do what you guys were talking about earlier, where they do a huge engine refresh. And then, and then kind of, and then, and nuke a lot of what we already have in the world, right? Because at this point, like, it's it's time, especially if they're going to be keeping this game for that long. The game at some point needs to feel like a new game. I'm sort yeah, of curious. Wasn't Destiny, to, go ahead. I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on that because World of Warcraft never really updated its engine. It did destroy the world and rebuild it with, I think it was Burning Crusade. And it's got to have updated its engine, right? Like if you look yeah. at World of Warcraft now and look at World of War Class, or sorry, uh, World of Warcraft Classic, mm -hmm. like those look like two wildly different games. Yeah. So let's say they did update their engine. I think that's the move that Bungie would need to make. Yeah. For the most success, but I don't think they need to change the name of the game. Like no, but they do need a, a whole the overhaul. Thing. 
they need an overhaul yeah yeah they need an sure. overhaul and i think they also need a rebranding just from a player perspective like to your point destin earlier in the show like yeah most games would be lucky to be where destiny's at but i do think that there is a certain connotation associated with destiny 2 as opposed to destiny 1 and it's useful to have a refresh in the minds of the player base so but but yeah I, I'm, I'm really interested in into seeing how this develops i think you're probably right that that we're at least uh in for some kind of long haul uh with destiny uh two and maybe they could drop the the two at some point but uh something's got to give at some point in terms of the engine uh, but but yeah i'm interested to see how that goes we have a few more notes to get through on the run of show we're going to keep talking about that but i do want to keep discussing this point about the engine and the refresh for just a second. Um, personally, I would love it if they nuke the world and in the way that uh, WoW updated or the way that um, Final Fantasy Fortnite, 14. Fortnite did. Actually, Fi I think well, Final Fi Fantasy 14, that was a reboot, right, mostly? Yes, you, you got rewards if you were there for Final Fantasy 14, but I, th I think that's too dramatic. I don't think Destiny is so broken that they need to... No. No torpedo the game. And I, I do feel like I don't want Bungie to get that messaging either because the community largely we complain about a lot because we want the game to be better. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of, of really, really great stuff within the world of destiny that could just be improved. Consoles should be 60. Absolutely. It shouldn't take four years to get into your menu or to go to the tower on console. Uh, and it's really unfortunate that they weren't able to do that with the PS4 or even the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X versions of Destiny 2. So the fact that they're coming to a new console, it's just like, it's not that surprising, but it does make me question, are we getting three more years of Destiny? And honestly, I'm totally okay with that. If they need to make backend changes and they can do it in a, in a way that helps them out, I think that would be okay. But we've seen them make some pretty big mistakes just updating regular stuff where weapons need to be disabled or they need to revert accounts because it eats all of your consumable item, you know? So time will tell. I, I think we have three more years of destiny. Absolutely. Yeah. Going on in the, the notes for the run of show today, we have uh, a new pursuit weapon will come with seasons starts with season. So didn't we have, haven't we had like a pursuit weapon every season? Like well, we yes, had, that's what I, I, yeah. I, I would love some clarification on that because we, it, with, with each new season we have, uh, it's not really a pursuit weapon, right? We get, if you have, if you bought the season pass, you get that weapon from the season pass along with a quest for its catalyst. Um, and I also want to see how this is different from the ritual weapons that we've had previously, where, you know, last season we had, you know, three pursuit weapons. This season we've had zero, uh, unless you're counting the uh, the Iron Banner weapon, which was supposed to be last season, but got delayed to this season. So technically we would have zero this season, if not. Um, you know, so it, it'll be interesting uh, to see what they do with that and how that differs from what we've already had with ritual or pinnacle weapons or whatever they were called before they changed the name. You mean the bow, right? From Iron yeah, Banner? Yeah, the bow. And then, you know, and then also, you know, recluse and Wendigo and, uh, and you know, in buzzard and all these other guns that were ritual weapons that came with the new seasons. So yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. How do you get the catalyst for the new shot, the new old shotgun again, you just rerun the, the new old shotgun. You oh, you horseman. horseman. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 was different because like that that was a that was just a, a an exotic quest that came out. I'm talking more specifically about like Tommy's matchbook, where you just load up the season pass at the start of the season and you get that exotic gun right away. But it came with an exotic, uh, you know, quest quote unquote to get the catalyst. And what that is is you just doing random activities to get it. Fourth Horseman was like it was a random drop in the lost sectors or the tariff the Seraph Tower events. And are you thinking that this pursuit weapon will be an exotic or just a really powerful legendary? I, maybe they bring it to how it was pre ritual weapons when we had recluse Wendigo. Um, and I forget what other seasonal weapons were kind of broken. Um, the throwing knife or like revoker uh, guns like that. I think, I think hopefully maybe they're on that level right? as opposed to ritual weapons like Edgewise or buzzard uh, that came out with that were that were seemingly less powerful than, you know, those those weapons that we had to pursue each season. Yeah, Randy's throwing knife was was pretty powerful. I still die to people uh, 
using it smartly in PvP all the time. Like if you're mm -hmm. on with your shots, it's it's a very strong uh, scout for sure. I, I would like to see more, what the hell are they called now? They used to be called ritual weapons. Now they're called they used to be ritual, weapons. and I think yeah, yeah. So I think it was ritual before they renamed it. I think it was pinnacle uh, before that. Mm -hmm. I think they were. I think they were called pinnacle weapons before they renamed it ritual because they were like these weapons are too strong. For, well, as long as for, they also they do all this and also introduce a new you know type of uh, money into the game economy. <laughs> another another. Yeah. Uh, oh, I hope I don't know if we need another one. I think we definitely Please, need no. another one. That's for please sure. no, Dustin. Stop. More, to more tokens, please. We're going to be gonna trading be chocolate, gold, chocolate, gold, chocolate modes gold dust, and it's going to be Eververse two. Yeah, gold dust. They're uh, they're also updating uh, bright dust and engrams. Engrams will include various include various year three Eververse items. So various. That doesn't say they didn't say all. Year three <laughs> Eververse item. So probably just the ones people actually want, or just the garbage ones that no. Or the ones wants. that nobody wants. Yeah, I don't know. It is another thing to collect, I guess. I got to go through my yeah. inventory again and delete just all the garbage. I just I gave up on the on the fact that they're going to improve the vault. I just think it's never going to happen now. So yeah. I just delete stuff that I don't use. You you broke me, Bungie. Fine, I won't yeah. collect all your things anymore. I'll just delete them. I don't even care anymore. Hey man, they'll yeah. be in your a solution. Collection. It's right there. Just... It's a solution. It's called the collection system. They just need to refine it. Yeah. Well, they'll be in your collections, Destin. You just can't well, access like... them at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> I can't hang it on my uh, my tower wall, wherever that might be. I don't know. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, excluding some items, only to have them introduced in a future season. That seems logical. Bright dust will be earned on account specific path. Similar to weekly bounty change, meant to mostly yep. help with players who only run one character earn earn less dust as a result. I think I think bright dust is honestly how we're going to do the universal ornamentation uh, more than anything. That's their their, their in game. The you mean the transmog? Yeah, the transmog. Yeah, that's their that's their in game their in game effort right. is by earning bright dust. Yeah, that to me, to me that makes the most logical sense as to the path that they're going to go with how they allow players to acquire these items, right? That'd be unfortunate. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about this. Thanks for putting this in the run of show, Travis. Titans won Guardian Games. They won it like two yeah. weeks ago. Did anybody yeah, even have it's, a chance? There's no, there's no official wording from Bungie on whether or not they've won, but it's of like... Of course they won. I mean, the TWAB won. kind of said that they won because it said, hey, Hunters and Warlocks, now's your chance to, you know... It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, hey, everybody's medals are worth two times points now. It's like, okay, cool, so titans are just going to win faster <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 titans have You're welcome won. guys what yeah. we're the best we always were the best we always will be <laughs> and this is proof this whole game was rigged hunters should have just won by default and they screwed with <laughs> based the on volume it's yeah. called quality over quantity destin <laughs> okay titans are quality guardians you see the pin see that that's yeah. great what is that titan. pin it's a titan. Uh, he's a sun sun breaking like a sun. Oh, I see. I see him. Yeah, yep. He's dope. Oh, I I don't I don't get how they did their math. I don't get how Titans won. But whatever they explained it. I could <laughs> I could go really dive in if I actually cared. I'm just a little salty that Titans won because they suck. Titans. Oh wow. <laughs> um, Destiny, you play as a Titan all the time. <laughs> when's the last time you guys played Destiny one for real? Mm, actually, probably about a week ago. Why'd you? It play was. It? What'd the, you do? Uh. Because I was I was missing some old strikes, and I was like, you know what? I want to play a strike that has small arms <laughs> and arc burn, so that way I can use Zalo Supercell, and it be just it just melt everything. Yeah, that was, that was those were the fun days where you could just pull up like a weapon that had you know like a primary weapon that had a an elemental attachment to it, and then just mow through everything. What about you? Travis? Those were those, those were the fun days. I'm pretty sure the last time I played Destiny One was the night before Destiny Two came out. Oh wow. really? Yeah, I've not gone back for nostalgia or anything like that. Um, maybe I logged on once, but I don't. I didn't actually do any events for sure. So it sort of brings up an interesting philosophical question that I think about a lot. I hop back into my Destiny One account and I look at my character with just all his stuff that I earned there, and I'm like, why did I do that? But I can't stop playing Destiny Two. Like, is it just like a personality thing? Do I have an addictive it's disorder? Just fun. It's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah. What what keeps, day, what you're keeps just you coming fun. back? Just I think it's friends. honestly it's like it's yeah. it's it's that 
it's uh you know the the aesthetic of the world is great so when you're in there it, you know it just looks cool it's and not only that but the the gunplay itself is rewarding so when you're just actually playing the game that is fun um so i, I think that that that's a large part of it and you know on, on in the chance that you might get a drop that'll you know increase your mid maxing specs mid maxing specs um is also something to look forward to too but yeah like it's just playing the game itself is rewarding because of how well the gun plays in that game yeah uh, it was it was really fun hopping back to you know my xbox character loading up a few old missions and uh, experiencing destiny one again I thought we would actually use this as an opportunity to sort of talk about our favorite Destiny 1 memories because I happen to be playing it this weekend, and with the news that we're going to be in the Destiny 2 world for a while, I thought we would take a look back at the previous game, uh, talk about why we loved it so much, and some of the favorite aspects from, you know, the that old game that we played a thousand hours for. Uh, Travis, we did hear a bit from Brian. Why don't you tell us a bit about some of your, your favorite memories from D1 days? Yeah. So first to, to talk about what Brian was saying about, um, about what keeps him coming back. I think for me, it's that when destiny is good, it's really good. I mean, like, I, I think I've said it on the show before, but destiny is one of the best and 12 of the worst games I've ever played. And I think that that is just very true of, of destiny. Like it's, when, when it's good, it's so good. And, and that's what keeps me playing. But uh, I think my favorite memory from Destiny 1 was just, I mean, it's hard to beat Vault of Glass. You know, the, the, the game had been out for about a month before they released their first raid. We None of us knew really what it was. And, and by that point, I think we had all run out of stuff to do in Destiny because uh, it was pretty bare bones when it launched. And that single raid elevated the, the entire franchise and the entire game. Uh, so much in like the minds of the players. And I think that's the week where it really became something that I think we all knew we were going to be doing for a really long time after that came out. So I think that's probably it. it, it it's really hard to beat that. I, I think maybe the only uh, possible competitors when the Taken King came out and really just like breathed new life into it. But uh, yeah, Vault of Glass is definitely a highlight for me. For sure. What about you, Brian? What What are your favorite aspects of Destiny One? I don't, you said you played Strikes earlier mm-hmm. on in the show, but do you do you have a favorite moment or a favorite memory, oh, or even just yeah. not not like interpersonal moment, but like just something about the game that really resonated with you that you really really liked? It, it you know for me Destiny One Destiny One Strikes were like a big thing for me. Like like CJ called it called me that like all the time like strike grinder brian because that was true like that's like if 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 we weren't raiding i was playing the game a lot and i was just in strikes just looping strikes all day long um mostly mostly in search of that god roll amago loop fate bringer roll um you know so that's that that's a different conversation of what's been missing from destiny 2 is that sort of chase but um yeah that's what it was like um running strikes to get you know to get those weapons and that rewarding gameplay like like i was talking about earlier where you could have a a a week and you know where small arms was on and arc burn was on and so you could just mow everything down with zalo supercell or if special arms was on an arc burn and airborne was on and you could jump like jump in the air with a boss and just unload fourth horseman and it would die immediately because of all those three buffs and it's like those, those were those, those are the types of moments that I kind of miss from D one, um, that were just rewarding in itself outside of just getting loot, and that you know those, that's the type of thing that I miss. Yeah, um, it was really really interesting going back. Uh, the mission that my Titan happened to be on was Cade's stash, and I played through it again. And there's that point where you have to you know go up and then jump across the bridge that breaks, and. A, the moment where the bridge like opens and then the middle falls out, it's just it's just really, really neat to see that actually happening in game. I know it's a scripted moment, but um, that's something I really, really liked about Destiny 1, those sort of like little touches like that that we got to experience, especially in Taken King. And mm-hmm. another thing I noticed on that tower, a small touch, I don't know if it's because I've been doing a lot of bird photography in my spare time lately, but there's, <laughs> there's two finches on the tower that just sit there and chill and they talk to each other and I had never noticed that before. And with the reduction in pressure, like being caught up with all the news that's happening in Destiny 1 and, and uh, you know, just making sure my character's leveled, I hop into this old game save and 
I remember it. It it feels neat. And with the reduced pressure, I can just really take my time and enjoy those subtle things that maybe I didn't before. And that particular mission is all focused around Cade. And oh man, Cade was such a great character in that world. He really, really added a dynamic that I do feel is a little bit missing from the game right Mm -hmm. now. I think we have Saint-14. He's sort of like the fun Titan uh, uncle that sort of hangs out with us and adds adds that dynamic. We have the Dead Orbit guy who we haven't seen in a while, who's kind of like the broody goth guy, you know? And uh, I, I do feel we're, we're missing that larger than life character that, that ended up being Cade. And it would be great to see what Bungie does to sort of fill that void. Are they gonna be introducing a new character? Maybe that- Cade 7. What, Cade, Cade 7? 7? <laughs> I don't know. I. I think Cade, like, because his story came to a conclusion and he died, I, I don't necessarily want to see him come back, but I would like to see somebody sort of bring the fun back. Uh, yeah, they kind of they kind of could have gotten there with the Drifter, but they kind of just they kind of just let that character go since the season of a uh, season of was it the Gambit? What was that called? Well, he had that whole storyline where season you of would... the Drifter. He's another drifter. It yeah. was in the name. <laughs> yeah. He, he had the whole storyline where you would do his quests every week and, you know, you get them from Zur, then you run them, and then you get a little bit more backstory narrative. And that never really paid off. No. Right? Do you remember what the conclusion was of that story? No. So he did this big thing with the emissary. And what happened with that? It's, it's probably in the grimoire, and someone's going to give me crap in the comments. Because I don't read the grimoire. Sorry, you didn't read that one page, <laughs> right? That's you, somewhere it, from that grimoire. loot piece you forgot that you had. Yeah. Um. Anyway, still talking about Destiny. 1. Do you guys have favorite weapons that you remember from that game? Right. I mean, like Fatebringer. No. Fate yeah. Huh? A, a Mago loop. I, the only reason I was chasing a Mago loop is because it had a you had a op, an opportunity to get that Fatebringer roll. Yeah. So it's like mm. that's you know the only re- and the reason why I was going for that is because Fatebringer at that time Fatebringer was stuck in the past right after Taken King you couldn't bring you couldn't bring that weapon forward before Age of Triumphs came out and they brought an exotic version of all the raid weapons um, so yeah Fatebringer was something that I that I carried with me through every PVE activity until Taken King came out before they kind of just nerfed all of those weapons. Um, yeah. With Calahorn being close second because of how awesome that gun is, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely Fatebringer. What about you, Travis? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of v- favorites. I remember, you know, scout rifles were dominant for a while, so hung jury was like <laughs> necrochasm was great. Uh, hung jury was like indispensable because it was just Ooh, so easy to get. Yeah, that's, um, that's the one I, really, I always forget about. I love that gun. Uh, I really liked uh, Icebreaker. I think that'll still always be my favorite gun in Destiny. Uh, just that gun was awesome. Response its own ammo. Um, and then also the adept weapons. I mean, that was a cool, unique feature. And we, we actually haven't talked about that, but that was actually mentioned in the TWAB. They're adding adept weapons to trials or they're, they're talking about it. So they're working on it. Yeah. No, no timeline, but yeah. Oh no timeline. yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. trials is on a rotation now. Also, we didn't talk about yeah, that. That's, that's right. actually going to be kind of interesting. What do you mean a rotation? Did I they're miss gonna that? rotate the map. It's going to be random as opposed to locked. Oh yeah. So like if you play, point. so if you win a match and you go into your second one, it's going to be a different map. That's what it sounds like. I think cool. that starts today. We haven't tried it yet, so why not take it further? And every time, every time a new round starts in the game, you're in a different map. No, <laughs> no, that would, that would be terrible. <laughs> that would just take too much time. Yeah, loading, loading round two, hackers being banned now. Yeah, hey, if it, whatever they need to do to get those hackers out of there. I, I'm to the point where I might just start playing on console again. Uh, we will get, welcome you for trials for PvP specifically. Got like it. I'll do everything else, but. Uh, Oh man, I am very bad at PvP on console. It's it was so weird. It's really it's really hard to go it's really hard to go back. Destiny man, it was that first game where when you were in the alpha or in the beta, you sat there and you waited until that server shut down because you wanted to know what happened. Like was the world gonna blow up? Was the thing gonna happen? Uh Anthem sort of did something similar to that during their disaster beta, unfortunately. Oops. And uh <laughs> yeah. So imagine Destiny actually harnessed that sort of interest and that curiosity that, and they brought back a moment where people were just waiting for the world to end. You, anyway, you know what I miss, and I'm probably going to get crucified for this, but I really miss the uh, capture the flag mo- uh, mode in in Destiny One. The Rift, Arc Runner thing. Rift, a lot yeah. of people miss that. So we're going to have to save that for next episode, though, because uh-huh. we have reached the end of our show. Thank you guys so much for taking your trip down memory lane uh, about Destiny with me. 
I appreciate you, as always, for joining me on the show. But that's it for this episode. Until next time, everybody, Guardians, Guardians, out. Guardians out. I was waiting for you. <laughs>